What will the future look like? What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you are thinking about innovations in technology and science in the next 20 to 50 years? Maybe you're thinking of flying cars, robots cleaning your home, super high-speed internet. But that's not what Elon Musk thinks about. In fact, he is concerned that technology development might one day become a real threat to the safety of humanity. If you know Elon Musk, you know he doesn't think like all of us, as Elon himself says. So, yes, I think, I think it's possible for ordinary people to choose to be extraordinary. But Elon himself isn't ordinary, and that's for sure. He obviously thinks differently. Even his brain seems to be functioning in a different way. Some might even call him awkward. And going from revolutionizing the way we think about finance to sending rockets in space, he is definitely a very interesting person. Unlike all the other popular CEOs, he has a whole different relationship with his following. He jokes about his multi-million dollar companies going bankrupt, like in this April Fool's joke back in 2018. We are sad to report that Tesla has gone completely and totally bankrupt. So bankrupt, you can't believe it. The artificial intelligence threat. So, what is Elon Musk's biggest concern about the future? It's the threat of AI. Becoming so powerful and intelligent that it might destroy humanity. Now, I know this sounds like something straight out of a science fiction movie, but his theory actually makes sense. Think about all the advancements that are being made in technology. In all the history of humanity, there has never been a period with more innovations than the current era. So one might argue that artificial intelligence will, one day, surpass humanity. It doesn't take a lot to develop a machine that is more efficient, fast, and in some cases, intelligent than humans. You can develop machines, and if you give them a goal, they will try to achieve that goal instantly. They don't need to think, they just use their program and algorithms to decide how to reach that goal. And then, they just do what is necessary. This is the case with your antivirus software. There are many threats that can be presented in many different ways. But the goal is just one, keeping the computer free of threats. Sure, there are algorithms and programs, but those are becoming more and more automatic in order to give the software the freedom of choosing what path is more efficient in order to achieve the main goal. Now, let's turn this into something more serious and that is currently not a concern. Let's say that, one day, our lives will be much more dependent on technology, and especially AI. Imagine a future where robots clean your house, run factories, and production independently. And maybe even do what the police do, arrest you give you tickets for speeding, and more. Now, let's say that some of these AI machines have one particular goal in mind, but humanity is in the way. So, they want to achieve a goal, but the existence of human beings slows down the process of actually achieving it. They will, without hesitating, wipe out the humanity of their way in order to reach a goal. Now, this is probably blown out of proportion, but there are many instances where AI could become a threat by becoming more intelligent and efficient than humans. So, what's the solution? Well, sometimes it is hard to crack the code behind Elon's words. But it seems that his solution are to actually merge humans with artificial intelligence in order to give them more power over it. Let me explain this better. According to Elon Musk, humans receive and send out data and information. Information that is received is called input while information that is sent out is output. For example, your eyes acquire a massive amount of information. That's an input. Distance, colors, proportions, perspective, objects, texture, danger, and much more. All at the same time. Then there's an audio input, like sound and frequencies and so on. And while our input is very strong, the output isn't. We don't send out as much information as we receive. Technology, however, has given us all a bigger output. We can expand the amount of data and information that we send out thanks to tech. Makes sense? But how can you do that? And that's when Neuralink comes in. The goal is to expand the human capacity of sending outputs, thus giving humans more power over the world around them. 
Elon says that if we physically merge humans with AI, we will be able to give us more control over technology, and that would reduce the threat. But how can you do that? We already have phones, computers, internet. What could make us even more powerful? The answer is by implanting a bunch of chips in your skull. And basically, that's the solution. Because as Elon says, once killer robots are walking down the street, it is probably too late. And the crucial point is that digital super intelligence is much more than just programming machines to do certain things. You can program them to learn how to do something. Basically, you give it a goal and that's it. It will learn all by itself. How to reach that goal. As I said earlier, if humanity happens to stand in the way, it's a no-brainer for AI to actually terminate the whole species. And Elon is really serious about this topic. Listen carefully. So it's really all about laying the groundwork to make sure that if, if humanity collectively decides that creating digital superintelligence is the right move, then we should do so very, very carefully. Um, very, very carefully. Um, this is the most important thing that we could possibly do. The Neuralink side hustle. Neuralink is an important project, but it isn't as famous as the other companies by Elon Musk, like Tesla or SpaceX. What do you do in your free time? Golfing, watching movies, hiking? All that sounds great, but Elon's free time is occupied by developing other companies. For example, The Boring Company, which is a company that basically digs tunnels between cities to reduce traffic, and Neuralink. So, the final goal of Neuralink is to merge humans and machines. But that isn't easy at all. In fact, very small steps are being made towards that huge goal. Here's your brain. Your brain is full of electrical signals that communicate to your brain what happens around you. Synapses are used to transport information in your brain. And that happens thanks to neurotransmitters. Information travels from neuron to neuron. And if you scale this up, you obtain a brain that interprets the world. Since there's electricity in your brain, that electricity is used to analyze your brain, thanks to electrodes that are placed near to your neurons. So the electric field is detected and then transmitted to a machine that can record and measure the information. Neuralink aims to take advantage of all this and to create a third layer of brain activity, like a brain system. The other two are the cortex and the limbic system. The first one is responsible for your critical thinking, problem solving and more. It's where your conscious is born. The limbic system is responsible for your basic instincts of survival and movement. Neuralink will give you the possibility of gaining access to parts of your brain that may no longer be active. That's the case of paralyzed or semi-paralyzed patients that have brain-related problems deriving from injuries or bad circumstances. Thanks to these technologies, many patients have already been able to control computer mouse cursors, robotic arms, and even speech synthesizers, as you probably already know. But the difficult part isn't just developing such impressive technology, there's also a legal part. The FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, is the barrier that cannot be immediately bypassed. So you basically can't just go around and put chips into people's brains. It's not very legal. In order to be allowed to use human patients for the development and finally commercial use of the Neuralink technology, there's a whole process. How Neuralink will change the future? Well, it isn't easy to predict the future. In fact, if you think about the past and the innovation in technology in the last 40 to 50 years, some things were unthinkable at the time. Take the internet, for example. Imagine going back in time in the year 1950 and telling people that one day, everyone will be able to communicate with almost anyone in the world, instantly, at the distance of a few clicks. Tell them that people will be able to see each other on a screen, even if they're thousands of miles away, all for free. Everyone would just think you were crazy. And here we are, decades later. We can do these things and much more. So, just like no one in the past accurately predicted our present, nobody in the present can predict our future with 100% accuracy. So, what we thought was impossible became possible and became a routine. Today, some things are more and more plausible, and this is the case of telepathy. As I said, Neuralink's goal 
is to merge AI and technology with humans by giving more power to your brain. If you could do that, you could easily connect your brain to your smartphone. At this point, just like you are connected through Bluetooth to other smartphones, you could connect your brain to other brains with Neuralink. Now, there are obviously a lot of difficulties and barriers that slow our progress down, but telepathy, which in the past was considered impossible, is becoming more and more plausible today. Something Musk does not really do is predictions. Instead, he gives you a glance at what his vision looks like. So what do you think? Do you believe that one day civilization will experience telepathy? And other amazing technology? All while traveling on different planets and chilling in space? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to Finance Value TV. We focus on creating extremely high quality content on finance, entrepreneurship, innovation, business, mindset, and much more. Join the family today. You don't want to miss out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.